Hey there, cats and kitties. I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues, and with this video, we discuss my thoughts on Season 2, Episode 13 of Star Trek Discovery, entitled Such Sweet Sorrow. And um, for my money, this episode was anything but sorrowful. Um, while it did, it did actually bring me to tears on a couple of occasions. Michael's saying goodbye to Sarek and Amanda, her saying goodbye to Ash Tyler. It got me misty-eyed. I was, you know, crying like a little baby. <laughs> You know, that was the effectiveness of the emotional content of this episode. It just, it brought it to boil, but it, there was so much more in this episode. So much less than sorrowful, just spectacular stuff. I have to kind of go back on my word where earlier in the season I said the episode we went back to Talos 4 was the best episode of season two of Star Trek Discovery <laughs> at that point. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I was just shy of saying the same exact thing for uh, the previous episode wherein you know, Captain Pike sees his future, witnesses his future being debilitated in the chair, another callback to the cage, to the menagerie, and, and such like that. Um, and, but no. <laughs> All bets are off. For me, this episode has now been lifted up for everything it had going on in it as my favorite of, of the season. Possibly the best of the season, because it was all about ramping everything up and it was doing it with every dripping minute everything that was happening every you know characterization beat every bit of action everything there was a momentum a steady momentum i felt that tension that palpable tension all throughout it was it was mind-blowing and just had me at the edge of my seat from the opening where we call on you know sarek and amanda and sarek has has seen a vision of this and knows he has to get in contact with Michael and, and both he and Amanda make that journey. Um, everybody is saying goodbyes, but at the same time, you know, there, there's going to be holdovers. We see toward the end that some of the Discovery's bridge crew, they are going to be going with Michael for all intents and purposes. So whatever the journey forward is for them, however that turns about, you know, it, it's quite interesting. Obviously, they must get back at some point because Spock's going along for the ride. <laughs> Unless something happens in, in uh, the finale episode next week where he has to, you know, jump off Discovery or, or something. Uh, he gets captured, whatever it is. Um, it, it's a pretty safe bet that he makes it back in time for his second five-year mission along with Captain Pike on the Enterprise before Kirk, which is still like nine years away um, from the current timeline in any case. So they get to the future. They, they must have some means of getting back to the past. It remains to be seen how that's going to work itself out. And whether or not that's even going to work itself out before season three. We know that season three has been ordered and everything like that. I don't know if they're even filming it yet, but uh, it'll remain to be seen how the finale plays out as far as whether or not it ends in a cliffhanger or something more resolute. And, and we have a definitive answer what happens with everyone, uh, you know. Um, there were surprises in this episode. Like I didn't expect, uh, uh, I'm not even gonna try to <laughs> venture to pronounce her name, but the alien character that Tilly knew from the Short Treks episode, uh, Runaway, I was not impressed at all with the Runaway episode, but I very much liked the, the rapport between Tilly and this character in this episode, calling upon her, uh, you know, expertise, her engineering expertise, in order to, to fuel the crystal and then get it ready for what they need to use it for and everything like that, that, that journey, opening a time vortex to the future. They could have just called the Doctor from Doctor Who, you know. <laughs> I don't know. TARDIS could have pulled along, you know, the uh, Discovery to the future. Um, but, I mean, I, I liked that interaction. I, I was completely surprised by that, blindsided, in fact. I, I didn't expect a callback like that, but it makes sense, especially considering where the Discovery is going to end up, which calls back to the Short Treks episode Calypso. So a lot of this stuff was already in the forerunning, was already in the plotting, and uh, even down to, I saw somebody commenting on a, another person's video talking about Discovery, could the crystals we've seen in, in uh, the opening, the opening music, you know, that montage for Star Trek Discovery, it goes all the way back to the very first episode, could this have always been part of the, the planning for the plot? that Discovery will be displaced in time. And, and that's what explains why <laughs> it wasn't around, you know, that kind of thing. Um, maybe it stands to reason that's, that's possible because when we look at Calypso, there was nobody aboard the Discovery for all intents and purposes. So there had to have been some way to leave Discovery in the far-flung future and then 
all of the, the characters who are now going to go on this journey with Michael, they must have been able to come back by some, some means uh, that we have yet to see. Whether or not that'll have to wait till season three, or we'll actually see that in the finale episode for the season remains to be seen. Um, but all of that stuff, all the surprises, the twists and turns, the characterization, the only minor criticism I have is, is Giorgio was once again unlikable. Um, <laughs> she, she goes back and forth between this really, you know, almost likable, almost you can see humanity bleeding through, especially in her interactions with Michael and her concerns for Michael and everything like that. She's trying to talk Michael out of this. But at the same time, she's completely wearing the veneer of, of, oh, it's only because, you know, this is a stupid idea and I'm going to be critical of it. She's not trying to let forth that it's a, a, an emotional or a familial connectivity that she feels with Michael, you know, that kind of thing. Um, because any sort of revealing of emotion is revealing vulnerability, uh, as far as she's concerned, being from the Terran Empire and everything like that. Um, and I thought it was really interesting, that moment that uh, I, for a second, almost had me scratching my head, but then I was like, oh, okay, I see what they're doing. When Giorgio brings Ash Tyler and Captain Pike to the uh, transporter room to transport them back over to the Enterprise, right toward the end of the episode, and she reveals that she is a Terran from the Mirror Universe, and Pike's like, Oh, what mirror universe? But then he gives a wink, a knowing wink, to answer the question. Does he know? Has he known? He's known all along, is what the point of that was. Um, he's known where she hails from all along. He never for one minute assumed, may, maybe, I mean, maybe when they first met and, and, you know, she rubbed him the wrong way, he, like, called uh, Admiral Cornwall and was like, what, what's going on with this lady? What's up with this bitch? <laughs> You know, um, but suffice to say, in one way, shape, or form, he figured it out. He found out about it. He's known now for a very long time that she hails from the Terran Empire, from the Mirror Universe. And uh, I just liked that knowing wink, that acknowledging wink. Because here, Giorgio thought she was going to get a leg up on him, one final leg up on him. And then she smiles, too, just, just sort of gratifyingly like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> You're good, Pike. Um, and and that brings me... Where was he beaming to? He was beaming to the Enterprise. That brings me to the piece de resistance of this episode. They built they built the bridge. They built the corridors. The corridors have the sort of red uh, octagonal chicken wire all through the corridors. <laughs> the bridge, I was looking for all of the callbacks. The, uh, you know, the, the turbo lift had the hand crank thing. Although, of course, people are going to bitch about the fact that Pike just turned it and then he let it go. He didn't keep his hand on it, uh, ordering to go to the bridge. But the bridge, the bridge all around the top sections, they had the multicolor sort of buttons and lights uh, calling back to the original one. Enterprise from TOS um, on the, you know, tactical navigational uh, array at the front of the bridge, right in front of the captain's chair. They had that sort of angled beacon that was white turned red with the red alert and uh, the, the little viewer on number one side, which we would see Sulu looking through from time to time. Um, keep in mind, I thought this was really interesting. Spock was on the correct side. The science station used to be on the opposite side of the bridge from, from where he ends up in TOS. In the pilot, he was up toward the left of Captain Pike. And, and so there was Spock at the science station on the left side of the bridge, rather than the right, where people more commonly uh, would see him in, in the original series. Um, just <laughs> everything about the bridge, the, the sort of banister around the, the circumference of the bridge, it had the red, it had the lighting, and when the red alert comes on, the, the, you know, banisters go from white to red, and, um, where the turbo lift was located, it was located, you know, right behind the captain's right on, on the captain's chair, which is where it's supposed to be. There's just so much love went into, you know, updating this design, bringing it into a 21st century equivalent, special effects wise and, and, and construction wise and everything like that. It looks spectacular, especially as compared, no offense to the designers of the 2009 J.J. Abrams Trek verse, um, but oftentimes that bridge has been compared to an Apple store or whatever like that. And uh, this, this looked leaps and bounds so much better. Um, so much was contained within this that said to me, this is, this is the Enterprise. This is the Enterprise bridge. It felt right. The captain's chair, everything about it, the look, all the designs, <laughs> where everyone was stationed, the uniforms, everything looked and felt right as a 21st century 
upgrade and special effects and technology and, and stuff like that. Um, and I love it. I, I loved it. Uh, I want to I wanna get like the most HD still shots of every single frame and just pour over them for weeks ahead, <laughs> you know, until we get to season three. Uh, because it was awesome sauce. And I got to tell you, you know, Pike saying his goodbyes, receiving that admiration, eyes up, and everyone, you know, standing at attention, sending him off. Um, of course, Spock not going with him. And I love that moment where he, you know, there was that touching moment where Pike is like, there's, there's no words, Mr. Spock. Um, and, and we know they will be reunited. We know that they still have, you know, five to seven years ahead of another five-year mission uh, that they'll spend with each other. And we'll see that bond come to its fruition in the menagerie in TOS, where Spock is willing to sacrifice his career, to be imprisoned, to bring Pike back to Talos to save his life uh, after he makes his sacrificial act and all that kind of good stuff. It, it just adds that much more flavor and depth to that relationship. But Pike, having said his goodbyes and, and seeing the Enterprise and seeing number one, uh, you know, just expertly played by Rebecca Romaine, I, I loved every every utterance of her dialogue. It felt very much, the you know, the stoicism that Majel Barrett had originally portrayed that character as having, um, while also not being afraid to, to sort of uh, speak on an almost commiseratory <laughs> level with Pike. The ship hits the fan. I, I love that line. I love that turn of phrase. I love the delivery of it. And I loved Pike's reaction to it. Um, and, and you know, I mean, she she just embodied that character spectacularly. Um, it, it all, it all amounts to this thing that has been said by, by fandom, the greater fandom who has been accepting and open-minded to Discovery, who's been watching it all along uh, the length of season two thus far. I gotta, I gotta echo what everyone else is saying. Give Anson Mount, give Ethan Peck, give Rebecca Romaine, give this new <laughs> Enterprise its own show. Give us the second five-year mission. Um, <laughs> just do it. Just do it. Uh, end it all. End cap it all with Kirk taking command. We never actually see Kirk. Uh, but, you know, I would I would be down for that. A mini-series, a whole other season of, of 14 episodes, whatever you want to do. Give us more track and give us more proper track as season two of discovery has thus far evolved into um the stakes are high the emotions palpable and uh this you know I, I started my previous episode discussion video saying that the previous episode felt almost a little bit incomplete it did leave off in a cliffhanger much as this one did but for whatever purpose uh, whatever reasoning this episode felt that much more complete i'm ready i'm i'm left off wanting more but not feeling dissatisfied by any stretch of the imagination all of the ideas came to their fruition uh you know jet reno jet reno surprisingly putting her hands on that time crystal much as michael burnham surprisingly had much as pike had had to do and they're all seeing this this horrendous future and it just makes me <laughs> wonder what's gonna happen i'm not really sure you know and i almost had this hair's breadth of an idea like oh is Jack going to become a villain all of a sudden? Is she going to be like, I, I don't want this future to happen, and, and she's going to become a, a hurdle that they have to subdue? I hope not, <laughs> you know, with how far her character has come. As little as we've seen of her, arguably, um, throughout the course of the season, I, I really like the contributions her character has made, and, and uh, especially in, in trying her best to try to get Culber and, and Stamets back together, their goodbyes uh, of a sort. It, it felt like... That isn't exactly what Culber was there to say. Um, you know, maybe he was there to, to be like, well, I'm going to go over to the Enterprise. And if Stamets hadn't cut him off and said, well, I got to go check on something, maybe he would have said, would you consider enlisting over there? Um, maybe, maybe we can find each other. Maybe we can figure each other out and, and have another go at this. Whereas it felt, it, you know, it, it was a, a goodbye, but it didn't feel like a definitive goodbye between them. Um, <laughs> so... But it was another great character moment, another great characterization beat, uh, uh, very emotional and, and um, definitely was resonating for me. And, and that maybe wouldn't have been brought about were it not for Jet Reno's uh, getting in between them and, and having some words with Culber and things like that. And so um, I appreciate her character. I appreciate all the characters. Everyone had a moment to say their goodbyes. It was a little odd because some of them we don't know as well as others and, and whatever like that. Um, but you relate as best you can. And, uh, <laughs> you know, for my part, this was just an awesome episode. Spectacular visuals, seeing the Enterprise, seeing the bridge set, 
all that kind of good stuff. I mean, why would they put so much money into creating that if, if there wasn't maybe even just the barest hint of an idea of doing a spinoff, of doing a Pike series? Give it to us, CBS. <laughs> Give it to us now. Announce it. <laughs> that better be the first thing out of anybody's mouths at CBS come five minutes after the finale airs. <laughs> You know, um, and I will be all for it. And then some. I'll be there with pin on, <laughs> you know. Um, so, yeah, I loved this episode. All, everything, just everything about it. And uh, I hope I hope the finale still runs its course on the same momentum. I, I hope it doesn't, uh, you know, fail at any point, at any stage, to be as resounding as this episode was. Um, so, yeah, with that, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below what you thought of episode 13 of season 2 of Star Trek Discovery, Such Sweet Sorrow, and uh, anything goes, of course, in the comments below, as long as you are respectable and sharing your own opinions and are respectful of others, even if you happen to disagree. And uh, if you enjoyed this video and like to consider supporting my channel, please have a look at my PayPal support link posted both in the description as well as the comments below, which affords you opportunities very much akin to Patreon that you can look into as far as setting up a monthly contribution, a one-time only kind of thing. Send me a personal message with any contribution you send my way, requesting topics I may discuss in the future, ask for shout outs, or make recommendations of things I may check out and shout you out down the line if I happen to take a look at. And uh, anything you saw fit to send my way would be two thumbs up for me and secure my longevity on YouTube for the foreseeable future and just be very much appreciated um and so yeah <laughs> otherwise until we reach the finale in a week's time i'm going to be waiting with bated breath I, I just can't wait to see how this all shapes up and uh, that'll be pretty much it for me on this hope this video finds you well and i'll catch you all later live long and prosper